happening? What's popping? What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another great edition of Simone with the Spizzoids. I'm Simone, bringing you guys daily sports talk. So if you're new here, if you're old here, and you haven't already subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you stop what you're doing, leave a comment, subscribe, keep rocking with me. Also, make sure you check out the mini links down below. The first link is to buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel. The second link is to shop the official Simone with the Spizzoids, a merch collection, get you the classic tee, the wavy tee, or the flower dye crew neck that I've been rocking lately. This crew neck comes in white, black, and green, so make sure you guys shop that before the season. And lastly, guys, turn your notification bells on because you already know the videos are coming like boom, 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 and you don't want to miss a single video or a single live stream. But guys, let's get right into it today. So as you guys know, well, some of you guys know, I've been out of town for, um, during the NFL draft, I was out of town. So I couldn't be in my studio doing my normal videos and reactions like I would usually do. But I'm back now in the studio. I'm back, baby, where the love, where the love is. Or whatever Drake said. So let's get into this draft recap. And it's pretty much, this video is pretty much more of a breakdown of our undrafted free agent signings than it is of the, the draft. Um, because I feel like we talked so much about the draft even though I was out of town. But guys, you guys know I, we're going to go through the draft. First, but this draft was just amazing, guys. Amazing. Um, there's nothing more I really can say about this draft. Going into the draft, if you guys follow my page, you guys know that I said I wanted to go defense and I wanted to, this offseason, my plan for the offseason was to go defense in the draft and acquire a veteran free agent. Um, a veteran free agent or a veteran uh, wide receiver. A uh, veteran wide receiver, whether it was through a free agent signing or through a trade, because I felt like, we're not the best at drafting wide receivers and we're not the best at developing wide receivers. So I really felt like we needed to get a veteran wide out, a big body wide out. And what did we do but fulfill my off season wish list, y'all? We fulfilled my off season wish list. We were defensive heavy um, in the draft and we got a veteran wide out, big body wide out in AJ Brown who did sign a four year, $100 million deal with the Birds with $57 million guaranteed. So. As we all know, we went number one in the draft. Our first pick, we traded up for Jordan Davis. Jordan Davis, Georgia boy, mountain of a man. You guys know I live in Atlanta, so I've watched a lot of UGA football, especially this season. And this guy is a run stopper, an un, just unstoppable force, unmovable force up front. And y'all, we're going to talk more about our D-line later in this own separate video. But our D-line is so freaking nasty, so freaking scary, especially on the interior trench mob. Now that we add Jordan Davis, y'all, we have a rotation of Hargrave, the Grave Digger, Fletcher Cox, Jordan Davis, and Milton Williams, y'all. Our interior defensive line is set for the future. And y'all, the fact that Jordan Davis is freaking going to be a depth piece starting out, like the fact that we have to figure out how much time to give Cox and Jordan Davis and Hargrave is such a luxury. But moving on from there, we got Cam Jurgens, a center out of Nebraska. And like I said, y'all, one thing how we gonna do, he gonna draft in the trenches, okay? Our first two picks were in the trenches, defensive line and then offensive line. One thing he's gonna do is draft in the trenches. So this guy, Cam Jurgens, apparently Jason Kelsey pretty much handpicked Cam out um, for the Eagles. And he's looking like the successor of Jason Kelsey. Now he's a guy who has been just a center pretty much in his career. You know, it's a lot of guard centers that we get and we draft a lot of guards that can play center um, or those hybrid kind of guys. But this is a guy that's tried and true center. So even though he's not expected to get play time in his first year, God forbid, because that means Jason, Hel Jason Kelsey got hurt. Um, he is somebody for the future. But y'all, we got my guy in the third round, N'Kobe Dean. You guys know I've made several videos on N'Kobe Dean. You literally can go back in my video Rolodex. Um, pretty much once the playoffs, the college football playoffs were, were going on, that's when I started making videos on N'Kobe Dean. This guy is a dog, and the fact that he fell to the third round, this guy was expected to be a first round talent before they started saying something about pectoral injury and he fell all the way to the third round. That's a major steal. So we got our linebacker there, and I love this move. Like I said, this guy is a dog, and a lot of people like to say, this, like I said, best player on the best defense in the country, national champions, best player. A lot of people try to say, oh, Jordan Davis made him look good, boom, 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 boom. Well, guess what? We got Jordan Davis too, baby. So if it was Jordan Davis that had Nicole looking good, then shoot, that's gonna transfer right over to the NFL. 
And guys, last season it was that Alabama connection. We got we got Bama boy, Bama boy, and Devontae Smith and Landon Dickerson. This time it's the Georgia boys uh, that we piled up on. But y'all, I'm ecstatic about Nicobe Dean, and he's expected to work out in the um, optional training um, activity, whatever OTA stand for, um, some type of optional training camp. He's expected to report there, so the injury is not something that's going to affect him right away. But guys, with our sixth round pick, our fourth pick overall in the draft, we got Kyron Johnson, a linebacker out of Kansas. Um, this is a guy that was really, um, really good off the edge. He's expected to really be a, a special teamers um, because of his speed that he has at the um, position, and he's a really good tackler. So we got him in the sixth round. And then also with our other sixth round pick, we got Grant Colaterra. Now, I don't know if I'm jacking up this guy's name. You guys know I'm terrible with pronunciation. But I'm sure y'all gonna let me know down below. But Grant is a tight end from Oklahoma. He spent time at Oklahoma and SMU, but we did draft him out of SMU. And they're saying he is a really good elite route runner. Um, so we have him, Dallas, Goddard, Jack Stoll, and now J.J. Arcega Whiteside, who has moved to tight end. But y'all, our draft was amazing. We did not address the cornerback safety position in the draft. And I don't know if you guys seen, but Tyran Matthew just signed with the Saints. So he's not an option for us anymore. But the Eagles went right into signing undrafted free agents. And our first two undrafted free agents that we signed were the cornerback position. And these guys could be guys that could come in and be productive and compete for us right away. But let's get into our undrafted free agent signings. So the Eagles went into the draft with 70 um, players on the roster. And then, you know, we drafted five guys and we got A.J. Brown. So that put us at 76. So then we have 14 players that we can still sign to meet that 90 um, player cap that we have um, for the offseason before they have to start trimming down to the 53 man roster. So there's 14 spots that can still be filled and the Eagles already started filling. So first we signed cornerback Mario Goodrich out of Clemson and we gave him a 200K guaranteed deal. Um, this guy had, he started every game last season for the Clemson Tigers. He had 48 tackles. 11 pass breakups and two interceptions. So through his NFL combine, these are the reports that were coming out for Goodrich. They said he had a long wait to get his shot, but was ready when it finally came for him. He has size and plays a physical brand of coverage, but might be tethered to a zone scheme due to a lack of desired chase speed. He has some recognition talent, allowing for decent head starts to squeeze routes in his area, but also has the length to play the passing lanes. But he also, but he's more likely to tackle the, the catch than play the football. He's reliable against the run and classic cover two traits, but Goodrich might receive some consideration as a backup safety. So then we signed another cornerback. We got Josh Joby out of Alabama. He was a two year starter. Then he had turf toe injury in 2021, and he was expected to be a third rounder before that 2021 injury with the turf toe. So this is what they had to say about him after the combines, the drafts, all those bowl games and pro days that they, they competed. Joby looks to be the part as a well-built, long-armed perimeter cornerback, but a disappointing season, senior season ended up leaving scouts with more questions than answers. Joby's tight hips and below average pattern Ma below average pattern matching attributes limit his chances for success in press man. Below average instincts might keep him from becoming a playmaker in zone. He's likely to be pegged as a cover two cornerback, but a move to safety might give Joby his best chance for, for future success. So both of these guys, Joby and Goodrich, are two guys that are expected to, that are, the scouts are saying they're probably going to be better at um, safety than they will at corner. Then we went and got a quarterback. We got Carson Strong out of Nevada. We signed him to an undrafted free agent deal. Um, I don't think there was any money guaranteed, but Carson Strong in 2021, he threw for 4K yards. He had 36 touchdowns to eight interceptions. And people were saying it's a steal that we got Carson Strong as an undrafted free agent. He's a guy that's going to come in and compete um, for backup, for a backup position for the Eagles. I mean, hey, it's a very, it's a chance. Who knows? He might give Jalen Hurts some competition, but I highly, highly doubt it. So this is what they had to say about Carson Strong. He's a touch or torch pocket passer with a rare blend of power and, to, and finesse to turn low percentage throws into completions. His surgically repaired right knee might hinder the sturdiness of his throwing base, but Strong still throws with velocity, accuracy, and touch either on or off platform. 
He has the talent to attack any coverage in all areas of the field. Nonchalant eye discipline and a gunslinger mentality means he's likely to see additional air traffic and turnovers as he transitions from Nevada's air raid defense. Scouts rave about his leadership and killer instinct. He clearly has first round talent, but long-term durability concerns surrounding his knee could force teams to make a more cautious approach with his projection and draft slotting. So then next we go and get another cornerback, Josh Blackwell out of Duke. He is an undersized guy. He missed a lot of 2020 through a, a lot of 2020 due to injury, but he had 12 pass breakups in his career and seven in 2021 alone. Then we sign another defensive tackle, Noah Ellis out of Idaho. He is a guy who got 240K guaranteed from the Eagles. He's a big body, nose tackle, but of course he's another one who had injuries in his past. Then we go get a runner, a track star. We get running back Kennedy Brooks out of Oklahoma. This guy had three 1,000 yard seasons and we signed him 240K guaranteed. This is what the scouts had to say about Kennedy Brooks. Brooks will be knocked for a lack of suddenness and explosiveness, but may end up becoming a more effective NFL runner than evaluators expect. He's a tempo-based runner with an ability to switch gears inside the run when needed. He has adequate size and vision, but really impresses with his ability to maintain space from defenders as the run progresses. He's not a home run hitter or a physical finisher, but, and is unlikely to offer much third down value. Brooks smooth, subtle running style can be taken for granted, but is perfect for outside zone teams looking to add competition. He's a running back too with upside. So from there, we go on and sign a guard, William Dunkel out of San Diego State. So he's an aggressive guard with broad, with a broad, powerful frame, but limited upside. He lacks the desired range as a run blocker in, in his past sets. He's a decent knockback pop in his early stages of the block, but struggles to close the distance and consistently stay connected as a man blocker. So they're saying he's a guy who's expected to be in line with a backup role. We go on and sign another guard, Josh Seals out of Oklahoma State. We sign him to a 135K guaranteed deal. And from there, we get a safety out of Middle Tennessee, Reed Blankenship. Then we sign our first wide receiver out of Utah, Britton Covey. They're deeming him as a slot guy with some also with some return game ability. Then we get another quarterback out of Brown, this time EJ Perry. They say he's a productive quarterback with who became a dual threat playmaker against Ivy League competition. He has the average size and arm strength, but below average mechanics and consistency as a passer. He doesn't value the football enough as a decision maker and lacks a desired level of ball placement. So we got two cornerbacks and two quarterbacks in the free uh, as an undrafted free agent. Um, but neither one of these guys I feel like are going to push up on Jalen Hurst. And we pretty much have declared that we are invested in Jalen Hurts just by the way that we drafted and that A.J. Brown signing. We know A.J. Brown and Jalen Hurts are really good friends, so that connection is already there. So that connection is already there. But guys, like I said, my biggest concern going into the training camp period, mini camp period, um, the preseason and the season is figuring out our cornerback to who is going to be opposite of Darius Slay. Like I said, we signed a lot of undrafted free agent um, cornerbacks, and we did. Um, we do already have a slew of young cornerbacks that didn't get a lot of play time last season, but now is the time for somebody to step up, and we're going to be looking out for what these guys do in mini camp, training camp, um, all of that, because like I said, we need a cornerback to step up and be the guy who's going to be locked down opposite of Darius Slay. But again, the way that we boofed up the trenches, this offseason, even before the draft with um, Hassan Reddick, this is going to be um, the defensive line will definitely help out um, our secondary if we're, we're starting a little slow and the secondary defensive line is going to hit the ground running. And then, of course, we, we beefed up the middle of our defense um, with getting N'Kobe Dean. So I am just super excited for this offseason. But guys, make sure you're tapped in and tuned in here because we are going to be getting more in-depth on the position groups as the days and weeks go along. So make sure you like this video, subscribe, shout the official smoke, the spin zones, merch collection, buy me a coffee, and until I talk to you guys next time. Bye.